So our session this afternoon is supposed to take place regarding difficult customers. I had a video, but we're recognizing that there's some challenges in showing video and audio from different things. Um, I need two willing volunteers to probably demonstrate something for me. Who, uh, who do we have? Who do we have? I see 37 people on, so do we have two volunteers? Two volunteers. Albert. Albert is volunteering. Who is going to be who? Who? Albert, I'm going to assign you to be the customer. Does it look like you could give me a good run for my money? Who would <laughs> like to be who would like to be the designer? So Albert is going to be the customer. Right? I need someone to be a volunteer as a designer. Any takers? I hear on a microphone open. Who is going to be the designer? Anybody? Somebody? Oh my, you know, we expected to get more participation than this. Lizelle is going to be the designer. Is Lizelle on? Oh, so we have Lizelle and Albert on? Yes, I'm here. I heard someone just now, but I'm not sure I'm hearing them again. Is Lizelle on? Okay. She Lizelle, said yes. Connections are dropping. Yeah, you know, certain times of the day, like everybody is now going to be logging into Netflix. Hi. Right. So here. Speaking here. Lizelle, right? Yes, yes, hi. Wonderful. Lizelle, we're hearing you. Albert, you're hearing us, and I think we're hearing you too, yes? Yes. Right. So here's what both of you are going to do. You Both of you are going to demonstrate something for us, right? Um, Albert, are you sitting down or are you standing up? Standing. Okay. How good are you at singing? Um, two out of ten. Where's your favorite soca? I, I don't know. I don't have much. Um, playlist? I, I don't know. I don't have much of a playlist. I'm coming to soca. Okay, so what's your genre? What do you like? Um, mostly gospel. Okay. What is a... Uh, Gospel that's talking to you right now. Um. I have my thinking, yes. <laughs> All right, so here's what. I will um, think of something while you talk. I want Lizelle, right, to convince you, seeing that you said your singing is two out of ten, I want Lizelle to convince you to sing a song, at least one little bit verse from it. Wow. <laughs> okay. I know I'm evil, huh? Right? And you have all these witnesses, only 37. Ready? Oh, that's so fantastic. Right ahead, Lizelle. Hi, Albert. So, all right. Now, you said gospel. I know quite a few myself. Um, do you have any specific artists that you like more than any other? None in particular. All right. Do you know Travis Green? Yes, I do. Good. Made Away, do you know that one? Yes, I know this song. Good. Now, in these times, you're seeing that Obviously, God is working. Things are getting better slowly but surely because we are seeing the light of day, as we will say. So how about singing just at least two lines from the chorus? Just two lines to show that you appreciate and we all appreciate exactly what God is doing for all of us in this time. Let me interject for a second. The whole purpose of this exercise is to showcase the, the interaction and so far they're going well. It is your choice, Albert to accept or refuse. You're going well so far, both of you, so I'll let you go ahead as you will. I accept. 
Yeah, I don't know why it is all of a sudden the voice starting to. <coughs> If I if I could yeah, remember the words, if, judge, we are not here to judge. If I could remember the, <laughs> if I could remember the words carefully, it goes, um, you've made a way. I'm standing here only because you've made a way. You move mountains. You cause wars to cease with your power. <clears throat> I can't remember the next word after that. But here I'm standing here only because you've made a way. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being such a good sport, Albert. Thank you so much, guys. So let me address okay, you, bro. Let me address work. everyone now. <laughs> So guys, you all notice what Lizelle did there? She didn't demand to Albert, hey, sing a song for me. Yes, you say you like gospel. Yeah, you have to know this one. And I want you to sing this, this Ave Maria and whatever. I want you to sing this and you yes, yeah, sing it. Miss say you have to sing it. You all notice she didn't do that. So what she basically did, she met him at his level. She asked him about his comfort zone. She chose something that was easy. And she asked him just to meet her a little bit halfway. She used persuasion. She modulated her voice. She spoke to him. Had he said no, she might have found something else to use to try to encourage him to reach her way. Albert, do you understand where I went with this lesson? Yes. Is this something we all think we can engage our clients with? Is, it, is this something you have employed when you, you're dealing with customers, guys? Let's see the chat. And for me, yes. And for you, yes. Do you have an example to share with us? Yes, actually, yes, I do. Um, and I'll, oh, when... while, while you, hold on. While you give me that example, I need two more volunteers. So you all fight amongst yourselves and figure out who that is. Go ahead, I'll do it. I remember there was one particular lady, I inherited the business. And so she would have been there as a customer long before. And um, I had an encounter experience, I should say with her, where she wasn't sure whether she was getting the same level of service that she accustomed getting with the previous owner. Okay. And so, for me, I had to say, call a supermarket where you shop by. <laughs> and I said, if for in, if your instance you are you going there, you went there there and you're custom, they're taking you back to your vehicle, you know they're treating you so nicely, you're getting a glass of water on your way out. And for some reason you went there next day and you noticed totally a total turnaround. Would you now observe that something have changed? Would you seek to inquire what was the difference um, in terms of what had happened? And would you now allow or communicate to that person, well, you, you would have been accustomed with this, and now you notice something different? So I say all that to say, I say with us, you would have been accustomed with a particular level of service. Mm -hmm. And if you don't give us a chance, we would not, you would not know if we are able to maintain or surpass or even disappoint the level of service you would have been getting. So mm -hmm. I was able to now use in a calm full way, in a mm -hmm. calming way, um, mm -hmm. persuasion in terms of letting her know, you know, give us mm -hmm. a chance. And mm -hmm. the only way you would know if you would be satisfied is if we would get a chance. Very good. And you were satisfied and the person was able to accept that answer? Yes, a matter of fact, she stayed with us until she retired. Wonderful. All right, so thanks so much, guys. So I see we have two more volunteers. I'm going to take you a little bit into the lesson to prepare you for my next task, and we'll gear you guys up, all right? So let's see. Now, there are many, many, many different types of customers. We already spoke earlier about um, good customer service, bad customer service. We spoke about 
how we are sometimes, you know, facing situations where we now have to be the customer or deal with the customer in a way that maybe we didn't know how to before. First and foremost, so, when you're dealing with how with, we are. First and foremost, when you are dealing with difficult behavior, you have to label the behavior, not the customer. So this is not to say that the customer is bad. Remember someone mentioned just now that maybe the person was having a, a difficult day. We don't know, right? I'm going to share my screen. Label the behavior, not the person. The person is not bad. Many of you who are parents would have been told this as well. You don't label your children as bad. You label the behavior as bad. Sometimes someone may come at you or, or quarrel with you or get on with you that for something that may or may not be your fault. And you have to be ready to treat with this when it happens. And we know this happens in real life and we know this happens in the work world and we know this happens everywhere. It can happen with, with you at the supermarket. Right now, tensions are running very high. And for all the reasons we discussed before, we don't know how people are going to behave when we go outside. First and foremost, mm -hmm. listen to what the issue is. We're talking about your clients here. Don't start to make excuses before you listen to find out what the issue really is. Before you get defensive, just calmly listen and do not take it personally. You already know your standards, you already know your quality. So let, give them a listening ear. Remember, if two people talking, nobody's listening. Find out what is the real problem. And this is where we were talking about having notes and having a notebook, recording messages, etc. Refer to your notes and very calmly discuss with the person what was said. In some cases, you may have been mistaken. In some cases, the customer may have made, been mistaken. We all make mistakes, right? At that point in time, we want to figure out how to move forward because the mistake has already been made. The error has already been made. So we have to fix it. If it's something that can be fixed or undone, great. If it's something that has to be altered, discuss an alternative. Do you have to make over a new piece? Did you have to make a substitution and you didn't discuss with them and now they're not happy and you have to undo what you just did? You basically only have control over what you can do. And then together you all discuss and take an action that is mutually satisfactory. When somebody is coming at you with all this negative energy, shouting at you and quarreling with you or you know, behaving aggressively, the, the first thing you will want to do, because we have adrenaline and there's a fight or flight um, <clears throat> response, first thing you might want to do is react in kind. You have to get out of that mindset. You have to calm yourself and you have to take a breath. If it's something that maybe you cannot deal with at the moment because you have your own stresses, Find a nice way to say, all right, I think that we probably both need to take a step back for a minute and come back and talk about this rationally. Find a way to get that done. When you're asking questions, you're not asking to accuse. You're asking to find out what's the issue so that you can resolve it. Keeping your tone neutral, as Lashona is reminding us, is also a good way to go about um, feeling this, right? If you've done something that perhaps your client didn't understand or was not paying attention when they agreed to previously, explain it again. Explain again why perhaps this material wasn't um, probably going to wash well why there was shrinkage after, even though you might have worn them before, why maybe the two fabrics together bled, even though you had advised it to wash it in cold water, you're not blaming the client. You're talking about things that you can try to do to figure out a solution. So you agree that there is a problem, but you're not saying the customer is at fault. You are trying to show empathy without being fake. 
remember, whatever you project, people will pick up. So if you're pretending that you care, somebody's going to know your faults. If you're pretending that um, you know, you're paying attention, somebody's going to know. If you're just patronizing the person, they're going to get even more upset. And we all know these things because we've been in those situations before. Kimberly is saying some people get disrespectful and arrogant and it's a trigger switch that goes off in your head. Yes, Kimberly, that's why we're having this session because we know it happens to the best of us and we have to be prepared so that we can find ways to treat with these situations. Nobody's going to tell you, well, you know, tomorrow your customer is going to call and cuss you up. Nobody's going to tell you that. Always remain courteous. This is your brand. This is your standard. Always remain courteous. Show that you care when you're speaking. Slow down how you're talking. Don't speak quickly, right? And I'm sure some of us have used these phrases that maybe we shouldn't have. So let's see what they are. I was reading something recently where they did some research and they found out when a human is told the word no, they automatically get aggravated. They get, I don't know, tense. So like if you're telling somebody no, you feel attacked. Try your very best to use alternative words when you are denying something to someone. And that's gonna be our exercise in a little bit. Sometimes we're in a position where we really don't know something. So I recommend that instead of saying, I don't know, say, you know what, I think we can find out, let's do some research. Or I can find out for you. I could ask my friend so 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 who's worked with this material before and I can find out if this is gonna work for you. Right? Um <sighs> well this is Trinidad. I'm sure we know someone who say dynamo walk. You as entrepreneurs, everything is your walk. Everything is your job. Don't tell them you are right, that is bad. They're coming to you to console them. Don't lie to them, but don't use those phrases. And gentlemen, I know you may have heard this before, but please don't ever tell a lady to calm down. That's a surefire way that we're going to fire back at you. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm, um, yeah. it sounds so familiar. Well, I'm, I'm a lady and I know. Don't tell me to calm down because... Who says I'm not calm? I can show you how uncalm I can get. So please don't use that phrase with me. I'm busy right now. Here's what, guys. Everybody's busy. Everybody's busy. You should try to find a way to make that client feel important and try to see what you can do, what you can work with for them. If you really can't do something, let them know that you are giving someone else the kind of attention that you usually give to them. So because of some situations, say for example, you're outfitting a wedding and you wouldn't be able to do some minor repair for someone that they could probably wait on for like a week or two. You can explain to them that, you know, hey, you know what, I'd love to do it, but right now I wanna focus on getting my bride out. I wanna make sure that her special day is as special as it can be. Just like I made sure that, you know, you got your stuff on time. So work with me a little bit now, right? Call me back. People, that is never okay. You can't ask for a call me text. You can't ask for a credit me request. You can't say, well, um, you know, basically call me back. You call them back. If for some reason you need to put them off, you've had an emergency, um, you're, you're treating with a situation, an emergency situation, let them know here's what I'm driving right now or I'm out right now. Let me call you back when I'm in front of my, my, my record book or in front of my diary or I'm back at the shop or wherever it is you need to stay. So never say that's not my fault. Because then when you say that, 
you're probably going to tell them you don't care, you're not going to fix it. That's what that message is saying. These messages are not just phrases. It's about what you're making this person feel. And if you're trying to tell them, oh, talk to somebody else, like talk to my supervisor, talk to consumer affairs, talk to Ian Allen, whoever you want to tell them to go talk to, oh, you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> you want it by when? How many of you have been guilty of using that phrase? You want it by when? How many of you? Never. Never. Yeah. It's a rude phrase. So here's the task designers. I want you to look at what are some of the negative phrases that you're saying to your clients. And I want you to find a different way to say it. And that is going to take us into our exercise. So who are our two volunteers? Hi. Hello, JB. Right, Hello. we have one volunteer. I want another volunteer. Sarah, with, 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 I don't know, Sarah, abandon us. Sorry, abandon us. <laughs> we love Sarah. <sighs> Okay, I will be, I will take up the other rule then. Janelle, you okay with us? Okay, yeah. hello. Hello, I'm hearing somebody else. Who am I hearing? Dominique. Yeah. Dominique oh. was offering. Uh, Dominique. All right, where is, okay, so here. I will, uh, uh, okay, here's what. So we'll do Janelle first, then we'll do Dominique after, okay? You all okay with that? Janelle? Yeah. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. And you have to, and you have to answer me. But you can't use the word no. Okay, no problem. Janelle? Yeah. Can you lend me $500? Okay. Um, what? Okay, you say, why do you want to borrow $500? I know your business, you. <laughs> Thank you, Dominique. You're coming on after. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm showing you how this usually goes, eh? Okay, but uh, you know, for me to lend Janine, you. Janine, listen, I need this 500 and I mean, I know you, I mean, you know, man, we good, we good, Gil, we good. Right, we we in this whole workshop, whole day. You know, I good, I good. Wow, well, so, yeah. the way my the way my bank account is set up, we need reasons why we can lend money. So you gave an answer about why you can't allow it without being offensive. You yeah. saw what you did there. Yes, I had to try and not say no, so I'm trying to give you. A right. reason for so my you have to answer in a negative. As, thank you, Lashana. So you have to answer in a negative. Well, she gonna say yes. I don't know. She probably had five hundred dollars to lend me. So you have to answer me without saying no, right? So we say okay. no without saying no. Is everybody okay with that? So um, Janelle here now. You see them um sanitizer kits that um Kimberly show us. There um you can't get like about five hundred for me and my family. I can look at my resources and I can get back to you. What time would be, what, what time would be good for you? <laughs> I think next week, Monday. You see how she's okay, thinking? She's beginning to, you, you realize you're getting a little more efficient at this, Janelle? Yeah, like it's coming to my as we go along. <laughs> and the point of this, guys, is that you have to practice. So I want two people now. 
to do the same thing I just did to poor Janelle. But you could use your own <laughs> examples and then we will switch. So Dominique, you want to try with Janelle and maybe Janelle can ask you for something and you can tell her no without saying no. No. <laughs> she said no. <laughs> she said no. <laughs> Without saying no. You're gonna just say not right now. <laughs> so come on, Dominique, we're gonna split. I, you Hello? know, Jan Janine is okay, we're hearing you. Janine is going to ask you some very hard questions and she's gonna this is gonna be payback. Oh, wow. okay, I have to try. <laughs> so so go ahead. Okay, okay so go right ahead. So Dominique, I guess like five hundred masks by tomorrow. Of course, I would never say that no is impossible. Um, now is impossible, sorry. Um, do you have a time frame in which you would like to have these? Well, I was thinking tomorrow. Well, I know, but tomorrow has a, a, a time frame when we should be allowed to make a quick run. So I'm hoping that it will be probably if you want it in the morning time, close to noon or just after lunch. All right, so I think our, our quarantine, which we see cut off time, I think it's 8 o'clock, so maybe by, by 6 o'clock I can pass through. Okay, that's 6 p.m. and passing through is ex where exactly? Well, where are you located or will I get it delivered? I am actually in the northwest, Pitti Valley, but um, I can meet you along the route. It's not okay. impossible. All right. <laughs> okay guys let's pause for a second so this exercise went in a different direction but that's okay because our interactions with our real world is never ever ever going to be textbook we're always going to have to be thinking at our feet and i thank you so much for, for janelle and dominique to, for demonstrating that um can somebody else come on and do the same exercise with dominique Dominique is going to ask for something and the other person is now going to deny him. Oh, well, answer doesn't necessarily mean deny. Anyone? Okay, I'm not seeing anybody. So here's what I will do. Okay. I will... Kimberly, Kimberly Good came job. on. Hi. Right. Hi, Hi so Dominique. Dominique, I want you to ask Kimberly for something, and Kimberly, you deny him. Without deny him? No. Deny okay. him, yeah. But I'll say no. Afternoon, Kimberly. Okay. Um, I saw in a promotional um ad you showcased earlier the, about your, as you call it, carry around sanitization kits. I was hoping I would be able to access at least 25 of those. Hi, Dominic. Thank you for possible? the interest. <laughs> Hi, Dominic. Thank you for the interest. At the moment, we don't have 25 available, but you can place an order and we will get it to you as soon as possible. Would you like to give us your information and we could forward you the invoice? Not bad, not bad. I like okay. that. Um, okay. Is it that the 25 order is too extensive right now? Would I be able to get half of that or part thereof? Currently, because of the COVID situation, we don't have the quantities that you are requesting, but soon we would have it available. If you give us your contact information and uh, email address, we could forward you a time and the cost of the 25 that you are looking for. Very good. Okay. Well, I like that. Thank you, and I will follow the information ASAP. No like problem. That. Looking for. I like that. I like that. So, Dominique, seeing that we have you and Kimberly on, Kimberly, you ask him for something and let him deny you now without saying no. Hi, Dominic. Afternoon, um, Kimberly. Good afternoon. 
I was looking for, you have a white dress with some ruffles and some red details. I was looking for that for tomorrow. Hmm. Oh my, um, at the moment, a lot of place. This evening, ooh, that's a little tight. I actually have some other errands to run with some other clients. Probably if I had gotten uh -huh. just an earlier request, I might have been able to facilitate. Um, but I really I can't say Yes, and I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm hearing and I'm feeling your angst. I am really, really unable to be able to facilitate you at such short notice during this very sensitive time, where time is of the essence with everything that we do on the road. You serious? But I really want this for the party this evening. <laughs> party. I can refer you to another yes. um, who, who might be able to facilitate something that is relatively similar, but I am unable to. Why? I really want the thing, gosh. Sometimes we don't always <laughs> are able to access what you might want at the place and time. And I, I'm, I'm really trying to work with you here by trying to facilitate the need, just it's that I am not able to listen. I might be able to get something to you, but it wouldn't be that specific item that you are requesting. So we have there. <laughs> well, I, I can, if you leave me some information, I might be able to forward some images to you with some content as to um details cost sizing so forth all right, all right don't worry, i don't want i don't want it i go on, i go on, I go on. all right all right, all right. <laughs> well, you have a great evening so guys thank you so much i mean i couldn't say the body language but amanda you like it okay thank you so much dominica and kimberly you guys were amazing so <laughs> let's dissect what happened there Dominique did a lot of things right, right? <laughs> and I think one of the things that stands out is that he didn't even tell her, Gail, stay at your home. What COVID party are you going to? We are on stay home orders. What is wrong with you? So you should applaud yourself on that one, Dominique. That was one of the glaring things I saw there. I saw where Dominique was trying to offer her options. I saw where he was taken mm. off guard a little bit where <laughs> where she said she wanted no right um, and uh-huh go ahead Hello. somebody saying something can believe mic is open kimberly i think your mic is accidentally open so maybe you can close it off so anyway, Dominique offered her options. He he was taken a little bit aback by how aggressive she started to get. And the best of us will not be able to do the best case scenario that we just spoke about, about keeping calm and not being defensive, etc. So all in all, I think he did a fantastic job being caught off guard like that. Can't believe you're, you're really good at, in this acting thing. I like that. I think it was a bit of payback for asking for all the hand sanitizer, but um, yeah. So basically, guys, at the end of the day, we will see that it, we will end up in some situations that we have no control over. And your task is to adapt it and try to find the best way to resolve the issue, right? So we spoke earlier about knowing your triggers. We, we mentioned something about if you're hungry. We mentioned about if you are sick, if you are stressed out, if a family member of yours might be ill. And uh, Lashona was telling us about the cloak. So you develop your own systems, right? Some of us might have a domestic situation that may or may not have put us in a, a particular mood. Some of us may already be highly stressed because of this COVID situation, the economy and all the other worries. So we have to find ways to manage that. 
what are some good ways that we can manage stress? What do you guys do to manage your stress? If you don't want to open your mics, you can just re return to the chat and I will read them aloud for you. In fact, yes, let's do the chats because it'll be faster. So Lisa is saying exercise. I know some people also engage in yoga. What else do we do to, to relieve stress? Watch TV. Yeah, actually, funny enough, yesterday I had a very, very long day. I had a lot of deadlines. And um, in the afternoon when I had my shower, the TV was on. And I sat there. I know there was a comedy on, but I wasn't even paying attention. I just wanted a break. We are all home. We're working from home. We're living at home. I needed a change of scenery, so to speak. So I moved from one space to another, and the TV was watching me, basically. You know? Oh, sorry, I came back. You were hiding from me. Cooking, Latin dancing. We see watching a movie. I also read, I like to read. And as much as I like paperbacks, given this COVID situation, my sisters and I love to go to secondhand shops. I don't think we'll be going anywhere anytime soon. And I've had to rely on my Kindle. What else do we do to manage stress? Do any of us paint to manage stress? Do any of us write music, play music? Do any of us crochet, do crafts? Do any of us make things? I make a lot of things. I um, I always repurpose things. Me, I see what you're trying to say, me. Right, graphics and videos. What about calling a friend? What about saying some prayers? What about, just like we had a little gospel song session there. I loved that session, guys. It, it's always amazing to me how these sessions evolve. And every time with you, every time I'm doing this, it's different. And I really, really enjoy it. Sewing, listening to music, meditating, watching my favorite DJ set on Facebook, yoga, doing webinars, cooking, watching party videos. And you know what? So just like I said to you, to decompress a little bit yesterday, I sat down and the TV was watching me. You wouldn't believe what I found myself doing the other day. I pulled up YouTube on the TV in the middle of the evening, like from two o'clock. And um, I was watching somebody organize their house. I was watching organizing videos. I don't even need to organize anything right now because I discarded a lot of things and um, I just, it was, it did something to me to see somebody organizing another space. San Brown Designs is agreeing with me. Are you agreeing with me? Watching somebody organize something because you see, just like how music affects your mood, what you look at, what you read, what you see is affecting your mood. And we have to know what our triggers are. Sometimes in my car, I may be listening to music. Sometimes I may be alone with my thoughts because you might be processing something, trying to work out a solution for something. You might be excited about a new idea you want to try. You might be, you know, just wanting to spend time by yourself. And that is okay. You need to know when you need to reset. You need to know when you need to take a break. You need to take care of yourself. We all have responsibilities. We all have other people that are depending on us and we are also worried about a lot of things but you have to focus on yourself self-care you know which is why even though we are all working from home a routine is important cleaning automatically puts you in a good mood i can understand that because sometimes to me it's like about um taking all the old and getting rid of it organizing the place washing my hand i actually would like to wash dishes somebody might find that very strange I like to wash dishes I like to wash wares as we call it right schedule your me time schedule your me time self-care is not selfish 
And you may wonder, what does this have to do with customer service? What rambling, this lady rambling here? But if you don't take care of yourself, you are going to trip off on somebody. I see here Amanda saying, looking back on old photos, watching documentary. Self-care regenerates you. Thank you, Sand Brown Designs. Self-care. I saw people posting up on Wonderful Will's page when they, they, they had to close as a non-essential business that they didn't even have nail polish or anything like that because maybe they were accustomed to getting their nails done um, professionally, which is fine. But this entire stay home has given us a whole new perspective. Are we doing more with less? Are we trying to find ways where we can take care of ourselves with whatever we have? Have any of you done your own self-care during this period? I see people putting up videos that they're cutting their own hair or that somebody's cutting hair of, of their children. And my mom used to cut our hair and it wasn't too bad. I actually had her color mine for me the other day. She said it's in a pink, but it's washed out now. So um, I'm seeing some people are saying yes. It helps cut cost. Yes. You need to take time. My girls have great looking nails. Yes. All the time you all say, do not have time to do your own petties, etc. What's your excuse now? What's your excuse now? Braided my own hair, doing a mani and pedi on Sunday evening. Yep, it feels wonderful. It truly, truly does. And if you've never done it before, if you've never actually sat down and made a concerted effort to take care of yourself, to regroup, not necessarily to shun everybody, but just take some time for yourself. You can feel re-energized, regenerated, and you can probably feel replenished. And instead of feeling empty, if somebody comes at you now, you are in a better position to be calm. If somebody comes at you with something negative or, you know, they want to throw their negativity on you, be it in the business place or be it in the supermarket, then now you already would have had a more pleasant experience to reflect on. You would have been taking care of yourself. You have to make that effort. How many of you have started exercising or started exercising more now that we're on lockdown? Well, stay at home notice. Right. How many of you have still set up a routine exercising more right good how many of you still have a routine you all know what time i got up this morning i got up at five and i know miss daniel said to me one morning she was up at 5 a.m as well i see she's been sending out emails at different times because i'm sure she's been working all day long and those are the things that she needs to make sure gets done so that nothing falls through you need a routine even though we are home and even when you are out of lockdown and we are into the new new normal, we still need a routine. A routine helps you so that you are more organized and you are less flustered. That way you will be able to honor your commitments. So when you get up in the morning and you sort out your own personal routine and then you incorporate the other aspects of your day, you can then deal with any unplanned things that happen along the way. Can we agree to that? Is that something that, uh, is that a new perspective to some of you? Is this something you might have thought of before but didn't really employ? Are you one of those people who are perpetually late? Do you know somebody who's always late and they're always blaming the traffic? Your routine is off because your kids are home. And that is fine. You have to help them get into a routine as well because um, my siblings, for example, are, are secondary school teachers and they have classes via Zoom from home. So that means they have to get up, make sure that they are appropriately dressed because when we face the public, we are t appropriately attired. We make sure that our environment is, is, is suitable for you, not to distract you. We make sure that we are pleasing to look at as well. We're not gonna approach you with yampy in the eyes. 
We're going to make sure that the content that we're bringing to you is not lackadaisical. We've done our work. And that means that we must take care of ourselves. We must get up on a timely basis, do what we have to do to get our morning done, have our breakfast, prepare meals if necessary, prepare fruits and snacks. Yes, we're home, but we still need a bit of a routine. Some people are finding that working from home is occupying more of your time because you cannot separate the work life or the home life. Right? Sarah says her child has online school and you have to work around that. It's all of these things that is going on. It's a, it's a very different time. So you have to be able to fight. Yes, Amanda is saying, yes, get up, be ready and showered and dressed. I was up at three yesterday morning. I was up at five this morning. But that's because I had certain deadlines. I owed certain, certain deadlines to certain clients and I had to make sure that I met those deadlines. And in order for me to do that, I also have to take care of myself. All right. Waking at 4.30. Yes, some of us get up very early. Sometimes we're fortunate and we can get a mid-afternoon nap. Sometimes we don't have that luxury. Working from home is not an easier time for everybody. Working from home might sometimes be a little bit more stressful because... You can't go anywhere and anybody who calls you when they need something, they know that you're, you're supposed to be available more or less, right? So these are the things you have to consider and I want you to work on what your triggers are. I want you to work on what are the things you need to do to make sure that your attitude is at a customer service mindset if you don't like people you're in your own business you have to know it, it's people you're dealing with so you have to be able to deal with them <laughs> even when you think they're not able they don't you don't want to deal with them right you have to care about them you have to be fair and equal to all persons you cannot show favoritism you are going to lose customers if you are always facilitating one type of customer or one customer or every time you're putting off another customer because somebody else is coming in who's probably going to give you a higher end job. You need to let the other customers go then. Don't be stringing them along and say, yes, 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 I'll get to you. Right? For those of us who treat with special needs people, do any of you have clients that are special needs that might be differently abled? somebody who might have had an injury, somebody who is autistic, somebody who has an autistic child, somebody who is perhaps uh, recovering from an accident. Those are different sorts of difficulties that we have to look at, right? And then we have some regular type customers, the ones who like to overtalk, ones who is the vex, 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 vex all the time. The one who know how to cut the cloth better than you. One yard will make it. You don't need one and a half. The ones who think they want the short dress, but they want the long dress, but they want the strapless dress, but they want the long sleeve dress, but they want the black dress, but they want the white lining. And the ones who think you're always out to get them, the suspicious ones. You know, you sure that braid's so expensive? You sure you need to use that lining? Why you had to buy from that store? I don't think that um you need all our money, you know. You all know customers like this. I want yes, no, yes, no. Anybody wants to give me an example of any one of these categories? Nope. <laughs> right one of the things that would have been forwarded to you was a handout that tells you specifically how to treat with each of these types of customers i recommend you go through so you will see for yourself what to do but the gist of it is please do not try to aggravate the situation accuse the client get angry yourself or even be moved to blues I don't think it's going to come across well if Gary has to come lock you up. Right? 
Um, I actually have a video that I can show you on some de-escalation techniques. If you would allow me one minute to load it up for you. Hey guys, so basically what this video was showing you was covering a lot of what we have done today. It's a reminder about setting your boundaries, about choosing, developing the kind of customer base that you need to you know, make sure that you also have a reduced stressful environment and interaction. Um, <clears throat> At the end of the day, Amanda reminded us that the customer is not always right. So I had a funny slide to share. You all ever saw this before? And I wouldn't recommend you tell the customer he's stupid. <laughs> this was a very, very old um, flyer I, I saw back in the day when I was able to dig it up online.
So you guys have some work to do in terms of developing your procedures, your policies, practicing how you're going to say no without saying no, working on your triggers, working on your stress management. Do we think that we probably could approach our customer service a little bit differently when we head back out to work or even from the right now? Is there anything particular that somebody that people wanted answer that we did not respond to? Is there anything that we wanted clarification on? Is there anything, any pressing issues or burning issues that somebody wanted clarified before we ended our session today? I hope you guys had a good webinar experience today. I hope that we've provided you with the tools you need now to work on your customer service, which is a major part of your business. We did not get to do some of the physical scenarios, but we were able to accomplish some of it as yet. How do you handle threats? Do you want to specify for me what kind of threats? Mm -hmm. If you are being threatened, you need to go to the police. If someone is cyberbullying you, you need to find ways to block them. If someone is physically bothering you, you need to document what is going on. You need to go to the police. Do not engage with anyone because sometimes people can manipulate a situation and you, the target, can be seen as the, the perpetrator. Go watch any Lifetime movie. <laughs> You're very welcome, Lisa, and thank you so much for having me.